What's up everybody? Quick video here. Probably 10-15 minutes. This is a new episode of The List. I forget which episode. 50 something. Maybe 60. I don't know. But it's a new episode of The List. What is The List? It's a show, one of my show I created for my channel where I talk about anything I want to. News stories, entertainment, sports, wrestling, pro wrestling, anything I want to. I mean, big stories, politics, anything. But I mostly stick to talking about wrestling. But on this episode of the list, I'll be talking about the return in 2020, and they're about to talk about it on ESPN's highly questionable Dan Lebatar, his father, and I, I love her, Katie Nolan. They're about to talk about the XFL is back, and it is coming back. It's This is not 2001. I just want to give my thoughts on it. Because in 2001, I didn't have social media, and I didn't have a YouTube channel. But, now that the XFL has been announced to return in 2020, I'm going to get my thoughts on it. Because now I have a YouTube channel, and I have social media. I have Twitter, and I'm on SoundCloud, and I'm on Twitch. So anyways, they're about to talk about it on Highly Questionable. I will play the sound and I'll react to what they are going to say about it. Watching the new XFL make you feel dirty. I mean, of course, right? But is it okay to feel dirty if the place that you go, you know, is a dirty place that's meant to take care of your dirty needs? Sounds because, like a strip club. I know, I know it sounds like a strip club, but this is where we're headed with the XFL because you're saying to yourself, science is reasonable, the human brain, that's important, and into the breach with no morals whatsoever. Vince McMahon on a horse saying, come bring me your dirty people. You'll watch and you will. Look, I'm excited for the XFL to come back, I think. I, I don't know. This could either be really good for the NFL in that now, by comparison, it's a pretty clean league, or it could be really bad in that we learn that this is what society wants, which is yeah. really scary. Yeah. Uh, but I have a couple suggestions. I'll just go with my main one. They used to not do extra points. I think they should kick an extra point while a mascot with a T-shirt gun fires at them and or the ball. I think that's much more exciting than the go for one. Okay, so to, to review here, she's against the idea and the ethics of the XFL, but if you're going to do, do it, have t-shirt guns. Why not? Do you know who is very excited about the XFL? Who's that? No. No, I, oh, wow, oh, you demanded an answer from you as well. Who else, Poppy? Johnny Football. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, if I tell you right now, opening night, Johnny Football over here. Tim Tebow? Tebow over yeah. there. Oh. <laughs> Should the 49ers. So there is their thoughts on it. And I do think Johnny Manziel will get an opportunity in the XFL. They'll probably call Johnny Manziel. I hope the guy's cleaned his life up. And I believe he's in rehab before, and hopefully the guy's clean and sober. Because Johnny Manziel, the guy was never going to be a great elite quarterback in the NFL. He should have went to Canada first, went to the CFL, but he was drafted by the Browns. And that didn't work. He does have talent. Not very much. But he does have talent. And, um... I'm reading the, the information about the XFL on the bottom of the screen. I'm tr they're going to play ten, a 10-week ten ten week schedule starting January 2020. 10 weeks. <clears throat> I, I barely remember watching the original XFL. I did watch 
a lot of the games, I barely remember it because I was like 17 years old. And I was, had a lot of other things going on in my life. Anyways, I think they'll try to get Johnny Manziel. There's only going to be eight teams. Eight teams. Ten weeks. I think they'll try to get Johnny Manziel. I think they'll try to get Tim Tebow. I don't think Tebow will agree, but maybe he will. It's a paying job, and it's him being able to play football, and he'll get paid good for it. So, I do think they'll get Johnny Manziel. I don't know who else they could get. There's a lot of talented football players that are not in the NFL. That did not get drafted to play in the NFL. A lot of talent. I'm sure they'll try to get footballs from Canadian Football League, NFL, that players that have been cut from NFL teams. I mean, I think, I really think, I honestly think Vince Mc... Let me turn a light on here because it's getting dark. So, I honestly think Vince McMahon is insane. I believe he's like 74 years old by now, I think. I think he's insane for wanting to start a football league to restart the XFL. A couple of months ago, like two months ago, he trade or a month ago, he trademarked the XFL again. Trademarked probably a lot of the, the eight team names already. I just, I don't know. Will it be entertaining to watch? I don't know. Until I see the first game and I will watch it. The first game in 2020. I will check it out to see if it's any good or not. See if it's any good football I'm going to be curious to see how it's run, what players are involved in the first game. On tele I'm sure it'll be on television somewhere. If they can't get it on television, if Vince can't get it on Fox Sports 1 or ESPN, I don't think ESPN will take it because... ESPN is in business with the NFL. They have Monday Night Football. NBC, XFL's former home. NBC has Sunday Night Football. So I don't think they'll go into business with Vince. To take the XFL. Maybe Fox. Fox Network or Fox Sports 1 might take it. Maybe some other network. I don't know. Maybe. <sighs> could put the games on WWE Network. That would be interesting. But Vince could. Because he owns his own network. I don't think. Uh, I don't know. I don't think too many wrestling fans in 2020 are going to want to watch the XFL. But I will check it out because I'm curious. That's why I'm going to check it out. To see what it's going to be like. If it's going to be a mess or what. It has my interest. I hope they get like... A couple players that have name value, like Johnny Manziel. Tim Tebow is a bad quarterback, but he has name value. The guy's has name value. You tell, ask someone who's Tim Tebow, they know who he is. I don't know who else they could get, but maybe former NFL players that are like not playing anymore, but will still want to play. Maybe they'll play. Who knows? I mean, 
this is good for the NFL because they're going to have a little bit of competition, but not a real competition because, well, the XFL is going to start probably the end of January. So the NFL playoffs are just about over at the end of January. Whatever. Um, I think Vince, again, is insane. He took out a lot of WWE stock to pay for a new entertainment company. Took out a lot of his stock to pay for the XFL to bring it back. I think he took out like $200 million, at least, or close to it. I don't know what a football league costs to start. You could have eight teams. It's going to be ten weeks. Probably cost $200 million. And it's Vince's money. I'm sure he has more than $200 million in his bank or in stocks. The guy probably has a billion dollars. I mean, Vince, nobody really, nobody knows for sure, but Vince probably has more money than Donald Trump, in my opinion. He's probably richer than Donald Trump. That's just my opinion. So, the thing I like, Vince had a, a media, whatever they call it, he talked about the return of the XFL in 2020, a media media call. And one thing I heard that I did like is he said they might not do a halftime. They might not do halftime because then the games would be only two hours long. And they want them to go by quicker than the NFL's like over three hours with all the commercials and crap. So if they do make the XFL in 2020, if it does have no halftime, that's a great idea, I think. To have the games be two hours long, that's a great idea. That's a positive. What else I heard? It wasn't that, it wasn't that interesting. I just I like the idea of a two-hour football game. With no halftime, that's a great idea. Will they have an extra point? I don't know. Will they have no uh, no kickoff? Where they have both players from each team running to the ball? That was entertaining, but I don't think they'll do that again. So, anyways, the XFL is returning in 2020 in January, ten week season I'm not that excited for it but I am curious curious enough to where I'll check it out and it's two years away anyways because this is January 2018 so we're two years away um, oh another thing Vince said in his media call Vince McMahon said he will not step down He's still going to run WWE full-time, and the XFL, he said, will not interfere. He's still going to be the WWE CEO. I mean, I don't think it will take that much of his time away from WWE anyways, because it's only 10 weeks, and Vince is used to being at running WWE 365 days a year, 24-7. So, I don't think the XFL will take any time away from him running WWE. There could be a positive. Vince is focused on the 10 weeks of the XFL. Maybe he gives power to Triple H for half of the year. I don't know. But if he Triple H gets more power, more creative control over the main roster, WWE, that would be a great thing. Because Triple H, as of 2018, Triple H has more brains, more brain cells than Vince McMahon has left. Because Vince is getting old.
And I think Triple H has a better mind for pro wrestling. A better mind. Creatively, a better mind. And he knows what the fans want to see. I mean, look look how many great talents Triple H has hired from the indies to come in. A lot of women. I mean, a lot of guys that he's hired to be part of NXT. Since Triple H has run NXT, it's been for the better. In my opinion, it is for the better of the wrestling industry. Is having a guy like Triple H that loves pro wrestling. And the guy's not a, he's not a stupid guy. You can hate him as a wrestler all you want. Did he bury a lot of guys? Yes. But I'm talking him running a promotion. I believe he runs NXT and has full control over NXT. And he's done a great job. He's done a really great job. I mean, he's brought back Paul Ellering. He's brought back a War Games match. He's done a lot of good things. Triple H has started, in my opinion, not Stephanie. Triple H is the guy, and Triple H is the guy that started the women's revolution for NXT, and then it is spilled over to the main roster. Hopefully, on the main roster, it's for the better, and the women's division gets better and better and better, and they get more time and more segments in 2018 and years to come. I believe it's Triple H's idea to bring women into NXT, have them shine, have them put on five-star matches, not like what the Divas were doing for the last 20 years. So anyways, XFL's coming back in 2020. Do you care? Do you not care? Will you watch one game? Or will you not? Leave your thoughts in the comments. What you think about the XFL returning, leave them in the comments. Your thoughts. Now I'm going to talk about... What was I going to talk about? Oh yeah, Major League Baseball. Hall of Famers announced for the 2018 MLB Hall of Fame. I'm a fan of baseball. The game does need to speed up a lot. But I'm still a fan of Major League Baseball. I'm still a fan of baseball. Even though in 2017, I did not watch one full game in the season until it was like World Series time. But I'm still a big fan of baseball. I love the sport. And I, re I love uh, playing it more than watching it, but... That's a different, totally different story. So anyways, Major League Baseball announced the Hall of Famers for the 2018 MLB Baseball, whatever they call it, National Baseball Hall of Fame. Chipper Jones, third baseman, Atlanta Braves, stayed with the Braves his entire career. That's pretty awesome. The guy's a damn good player, and he is a Hall of Famer. He has the numbers. He was a switch hitter. I don't have his stats and numbers in front of me, but I did see them yesterday. Anyways, Chipper Jones, like the Braves or not, I was not a fan of the Braves. I'm a fan of the Brewers and a few other teams. Anyways, Chipper Jones deserves to be a Hall of Famer. That guy was damn good. Really good. And he was an MVP, I believe, in 99 or 98, I think. Or some. He, I know he won an MVP. And he's a many, many time All-Star. And he was a great switch hitter. And he was a franchise player. Chipper Jones. He deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. I don't got a problem with it. 
Vladimir Guerrero. Great player. Guy could absolutely crush the ball. And you'd hit home runs. Guy had a beautiful swing. The guy would absolutely destroy the ball. So, <laughs> Chipper Jones, not yet, yeah, I already said Chipper Jones. Vladimir Guerrero, I think that's how you say his name. Guy's a great player. Guy played for the Expos forever. And sadly, they never got to the playoffs and did anything. But still, Vladimir Guerrero was like the face of the Expos. Montreal Expos. They no longer exist. But they were a pretty entertaining team. Good franchise. Uh, Montreal should get a baseball team again. They deserve to have another baseball team in Montreal. But Guerrero, the guy was fun to watch. The guy's a great player. He deserves to be in there. Next Hall of Famer, Jim Tomey. Jim Tomey, great player. Guy, just great home run hitter. Had great power. Was a great, great Cleveland Indian for years. Then he's on the Phillies. Then he's on the Twins, I believe. Jim Tomey, great Hall of Fame player. I forget, uh, there's uh, one more guy, I believe, that is selected. There were four selected to the Hall of Fame, but I can't remember the other guy's name. But Chipper Jones, Jim Tomey, Vladimir Guerrero, all great players, all deserve to be in the Hall of Fame. As for other great players, oh, Trevor Hoffman. Because I just turned it on MLB Network. Trevor Hoffman. He's also in the Hall of Fame. He got selected. He was a brewer for I think one or two years. The end of his career. Trevor Hoffman. Great closer. Deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. Guy was a great, great San Diego Padre for years. And then he went to the... I think the Brewers after San Diego and maybe another team after the Brewers. Anyways, all four of these guys deserve to be in the MLB or Baseball Hall of Fame. They all deserve it. They were all great players and fun to watch. So this ends this episode of the list. Talked about the XFL returning and talked about the new MLB Baseball Hall of Famers. Hope you enjoyed it. Bye for now.